Well, you have to realize when Milton Friedman said that, and he was always a hero of mine, that was in 1970. The top income tax rate had been 90%, had just come to 70. Wealth inequality was one fifth of what it is today. So we were living in that semi socialist state at that point in time. And so he was the kind of counterbalance to that. Uh, fast forward to where we are today, and we now have the highest wealth inequality in the history of this country. We've got literally half the country that can't raise a thousand dollars for a family emergency. We've got 35% of the wealth used to be owned by the 90% of the pop, lower, bottom 90% of the population in 1985. Today, the bottom 90% of the population owns 23% of the wealth, so they've lost a third, and that 12%'s gone to the top 1%. So we've got, we've got a system that I think yeah. we all would agree is on the wrong track. You're gonna share a slide with the people here that I think is fascinating. You, you Just Capital, firm you're very involved with, you've helped Foundation. Found, foundation, mm -hmm. excuse me, you helped found. Right. Uh, has very different principles in maximizing shareholder return. You went to the American public, surveyed them, and they had very different values about what a corporation should be doing than maximizing shareholder return. They said 25% of, of what a corporation should be doing is making sure workers get fair pay and benefits. 20% say customer treatment and privacy are essential. Uh, products should be socially beneficial. 15% say, look at this, and good for the environment, 13%. I want to put up the next one because only, uh, respondents felt that only about 9% of the real purpose of a company, 8%, excuse me, should be to maximize investor returns. That's the old Milton Friedman. Friedman said 100%. Your point is the American public is already socially responsible. But how do you get them to change the attitude? How do you go to a boardroom and investors and tell them, no, no, adopt this model. Don't adopt Milton right. Friedman. Well, well, so here are the facts. The facts are, since 2008, 92% of corporate profits have gone to shareholders. It's the exact photo negative of what the American public thinks a just company should do. So we've got this big disconnect between what the American public thinks and what uh, corporate boardrooms, the C-suite, are actually doing. The interesting thing is there's a way that we can bridge that gap where everyone wins. So what Just Capital found, uh, excuse me, Just Capital does is we rank the Russell 1000 companies from one to a thousand every year. Uh, according to those metrics, not determined by uh, us or uh, an academic panel, but by the American public. We've polled over 100,000 people over the past four years. So this is what the American public thinks. Yeah, yeah. We rank those companies from one to 1,000. We created an ETF, which is why I'm here, that takes in the 33 industries that track the Russell 1000, it takes the top half, the top performing, of those 33 sectors, and we have an ETF that has uh, half the names of the Russell, the best performing on those metrics, uh, according to the American yeah. public, they're important. That index on so many metrics outperforms yeah. the rest of the companies. Now, it, that, that it symbol. outperforms stock, stock prices better, right. it outperforms uh, the Just Index, outperforms uh, the Russell 1000, on average, yeah. those companies create jobs at a 27% faster rate, has a 3% higher return on equity, recycles waste nine times uh, the average. I could go on and on. The, and that symbol is J-U-S-T, that ETF you're talking about. You talk a lot about wealth inequality. It, it, is there a connection here? Do you think if corporations addressed these issues and started adopting the kind of values you're espousing here, that that would help address the wealth inequality problem? Is, is there a connection yeah, there, here? There's, uh, clearly there's a connection. I think we've got a, a mania going on and buybacks and a mania going on in terms of shareholder premacy. It, it wasn't always this way, right? If we just go back to when I was a, a youngster, corporate pay, CEOs made 20 times that of the average line worker. So things have been different and can be different again. And if they're not, I'm really nervous about yeah. what the ultimate social consequences are in this country. Well, Senator Schumer and Sanders introduced a bill to limit buybacks recently. Right. Did you, do you support that? Well, I've, I've been talking with Senator Schumer on justness for over a year. Um, I don't know if I want to see a legislative, a, a legislative outcome for this. 
I'd love to see this happen organically. If I was, and I'm not, if I was a director on a, on a public company or a private company, for-profit company, there's two questions I would ask before I even thought about shareholder buybacks, dividends, or anything. The first question would be, how many of my employees are not making a living wage? That's the, that's the first question that I would ask. The second one, if I were director, I'd ask is, what are we doing to help local communities? What percentage charitable contributions going to the most needy in the place where we have customers? What are we doing? So in 1985, charitable contributions yeah. by companies were 2% of revenues. Today it's 1%. Why is that?